Hello everyone and greetings from Nysora's headquarters. We are delighted to see our community grow so strong on YouTube with over 150,000 subscribers. And we've seen how much you all appreciate our videos on difficult IV access. And today I'm here to pinpoint three most common mistakes during IV cannulation. What's really interesting is that you will not find these tips or tips on these three mistakes or how to avoid them in books, manuals, or even on YouTube videos. But if you understand these three mistakes and avoid them, you will be so much more successful with IV cannulation in your practice. But before we get to them, I'd like to thank Dr. Blue's Belgian Brews for their support of this video. The Dr. Blue's incredible placebo and non-alcoholic beer is a true healthy revolution. One day takes the alcohol away, just what the doctor ordered. Get yours at drblues.com. What follows in this video is no placebo, but the real thing. The tips from the pros that will transform your success rate with intravenous access. And just before we reveal them, I'd like to shoot out a big thank you to each and every one of you for placing your trust in our educational content. And if you find information we share valuable, do hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. You don't want to miss out on our upcoming educational videos. Some of you may be asking, where are all of these IV tips coming from? And what are my credentials for recommending them so confidently? Well, let me take you back to 1990s. I was trained in internal medicine and eventually became a board certified internist in the state of New York before my journey to anesthesiology. This period was the zenith of the AIDS epidemic in the United States. IV access in these patients was immensely challenging. They were often emaciated with thick skin, battling severe dehydration, sepsis, and illnesses. To add to the challenge, many had histories of IV drug use, leaving their peripheral veins fried. In those trying times, I honed my skills and learned techniques to achieve IV access even in the most difficult patients. And that is why I feel the responsibility to pass on that knowledge to you. I am an anesthesiologist with 25 plus years of experience. As an anesthesiologist, we pride ourselves on our ability to secure IV access swiftly and efficiently in anyone. It's pivotal for our patient's safety and essential before you can administer anesthesia or resuscitate a patient in a dire straits. However, even in the most experienced hands, IV access, intravenous cannulation, and venipuncture do not always go as planned. So let's have a closer look at some of these not-so-glamorous moments. We asked the AI, artificial intelligence, the chat GPT, about the most common reasons IV cannulation might fail. And here's what it listed. Difficult vein anatomy, patient movement, poor technique, vein collapse, multiple punctures. While all of these reasons are valid, but just like the manuals on IV access or videos we watched, virtually no one mentioned the three mistakes we're about to share in this video. And here they are. Be patient. The first common mistake is rushing. Especially in high pressure situations, there's a tendency to want to secure IV access quickly. However, being hasty often works against you. After you apply the tourniquet or venous stasis with your blood pressure cup, take your time to ensure that the veins are adequately filled with blood and distended. Allow a minute or two for the tourniquet to do its job. This little bit of patience can significantly improve your chances of success, especially in patients with tricky IV access. And one or two minutes of patience can actually save you a lot more time by preventing additional attempts or outright failure to secure IV access by rushing. Apply the tourniquet and go about some other business for a couple of minutes until the veins fill up. Failed an attempt? Do not immediately release that tourniquet. If you do, this will waste all the valuable tourniquet time you expended for the veins to fill up with blood. Instead, leave the catheter where you placed it 
and promptly choose another vein and continue with cannulation attempt without letting go of the tourniquet. This may be easier said than done because virtually everyone immediately releases the tourniquet right after cannulation attempt. Don't do it. After a failed attempt, resist the urge to pull out the catheter immediately. Leaving the catheter in place can prevent hematoma formation like a plug inside the vein, making subsequent attempts much easier. But if you remove that IV, you can remove the needle, but leave the catheter in as a plug inside the vein. Because if you remove it, you're most likely going to get hematoma immediately, which will disrupt your next subsequent attempted IV cannulation. So there you have it folks. I have just shared three actionable tips for mastering IV cannulation. Remember, patience, maintain internal pressure, and strategic handling of unsuccessful attempts can dramatically increase your success rate. I hope this video has been enlightening. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'd love to hear your own tips or experiences you'd like to share in the comments below. Share this video with your colleagues and help us grow our community. Stay safe and see you next time.